She's dead. You killed her. She's dead? I think you knew that already. No, I did not. Oh my god. Can divulge information. Just stop. L acting? What? What? She, she's that? She's that? Oh, man. Oh, oh there's no way. Oh. What? Are you serious? So, JCS, the GOAT, himself has posted after about 50 decades, you know what I'm saying? So, JCS has never missed in his life. So, we are going to watch this 42-minute video called Yardley's Ex-Boyfriend. JCS is a uh, is criminal uh, psychology, essentially. So, you're going to have to open up your mind a little bit. It's a little investigation that we really get into. So, let's go ahead and see what JCS hitting on this time. Let's go ahead and get into it. It's going to be a long video. I'm going to try not to pause too much, but if I do pause, don't about it because you know I pause. But my name is Lisa Reeves, okay, and I am a detective here at the Charleston Police Department. Okay. So before I can even, I want to talk to you, I want to make sure you do understand your rights, okay? And that way I can explain to you what's going on and all that good stuff. Oh, my ear! God damn, bro! Do y'all, like, am I the only one who's hearing that fucking 2002 fucking static in my ear, bro? Why did you guys say, why did you guys come in and say you, you were searching for an assault? Do you want me calling anybody for you, George? It's an interesting concept to think of how you might respond to what would normally be an easy question, especially during a circumstance where it becomes a terrifying dilemma. We ask that you contemplate this question while you put yourself in George's position, but not before you grasp the context of what brought him to this moment. It begins with 22-year-old sports scholar Yardley Love, a star lacrosse player at the University of Virginia. She okay. is captured in this photograph playing in the second to last game of the season, clearly aware of the obstacles that lie in front of her, yet continuing to move forward, which is the circumstantial detail that turned this picture into a symbol for the globally recognized organization that would be founded in her memory. This would be the last photograph taken that day, capturing yeah. Yardley's last embrace with her head coach, Julie Myers. Both were unaware this exact moment would soon be on the national front pages. On May 3, 2010, at roughly 2.15 a.m., Yardley's roommate returned from a night out to their off-campus apartment. Upon entering, she saw that Yardley's bedroom had been broken into, at which point she rushed inside to find her unresponsive on the mattress. She had blood coming out of her nose and severe bruising across the right side of her face. But the most alarming thing was that she wasn't waking up. Her friend called 911, who instantly guided her through the steps of CPR, which was then taken over by paramedics who arrived on the scene four minutes later. But their attempts at revival were unsuccessful, and Yardley was pronounced dead at exactly 2.47 a.m. At 2.53 that same morning, criminal investigator Lisa Reeves woke up to a phone call from the sheriff's office. By 2.59, she had arrived at Yardley's apartment leading the investigation, and by 3.50, confirmed that she had her first person of interest, which was 22-year-old George Hughley V, Yardley's ex-boyfriend, and then... George Hughley the fix. The, the fifth, George Hughley, the fifth. There's no way this nigga come from a lineage of Hughleys. The, the Hughley, like there's no way they gave, they gave bro that, bro, different people that title five times. There's no Sorry, way bro had, what we reacted bro, to. it's time of day, of, like there's no way bro was like, his lineage, he come from a lineage of Hughleys. That's just, that's just bad titles. Interest, which was 22-year-old George Hughley V, Yardley's ex-boyfriend. And the next several hours were spent gathering information before she knocked at his front door. She found out that George was a fifth-generation heir to a very wealthy American family, whose... Is anybody surprised, bro? The fifth Hughley. This nigga had, like, the f the fifth Hughley. Roots lay in lumber dating back to the 1900s. He was educated at Landon Prep, a prestigious all-boys private school in Bethesda, Maryland, with annual tuition fees of up to $50,000. George was the star player of the lacrosse team and became an All-American athlete. This led to a full scholarship at the University of Virginia, where he remained a key player in the starting lineup, and where he would also meet, then spark a romance with fellow lacrosse player Yardley Love. 
They dated for almost two years. Hughley and Love's relationship was an on again, off again one where they cheated on each other throughout and that tempers flared both yeah. ways. What was going on with these two young people? What may have led someone to do what happened? These are just a completely unbelievable set of facts. Everybody watched the relationship. People were really troubled by it. They were scared for her. Nobody knew what to do. Yardley ended the relationship in 2010, just two weeks before graduation. Nine days later, she was found dead in her bedroom. And that same morning, wow. George Hughley would hear a knock at his front door. He opened to Detective Lisa Reeves, who was dressed in civilian clothing. She introduced herself as a police officer, but mentioned nothing of the crime. She simply stated that she was conducting an investigation that could benefit from his presence at the sheriff's office. George's response was to lethargically put on his flip-flops, then walk over to the passenger side door of her unmarked police car and let himself in. Somewhat bewildered, Lisa got in and drove them to the police station a few minutes away without talking. It was around then when she noticed bruising on his knuckles and cuts on his forearm, yeah. at which point George was no longer a person of interest. He was the prime suspect. What's that? My drama paper still right now. Yeah. Nigga, fuck your drama paper, nigga. You should have, bro, procrastinated to the last second, nigga. Like, who, who does that? Who would procrastinate till, like, 11 o'clock, like... All right, your first name is George? Yes. Right away, you'll come to notice that He's George is oblivious club. to the gravity of his situation, and it would be very safe to assume that he at this moment is unaware that Yardley has died. He seems to believe that he's in as much trouble as he would be sitting in a principal's office, perhaps for getting in a fight at class or on the lacrosse field, and the sooner he provides a sanitized version of the truth, the sooner he'll get to go home. This, of course, ties in perfectly with the interrogator's opening strategy which we've labeled warmth for the sake of this video. She will downplay the severity of his situation to a considerable degree while maintaining a friendly temperament with a sympathetic undertone. She needs the suspect to feel safe and secure for the time being. To remain yeah. silent, anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before questioning and have one present during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be provided for you. And if you're willing to talk to us now, you have the right to stop talking any time. George has two options here. Option one is to remain silent. They never really do. I'm not going to hold you. Most people never really do for some reason, like remain silent. They always just kind of talk for some reason because they think they'll make it better for them, but it usually doesn't. Then allow his father to get him the most expensive attorneys in the country. He would then have years to examine the evidence, evaluate the many options available, and then construct the most self-preserving storyline with world-renowned experts in criminal defense before they present it to a jury. Unfortunately for George, he takes option two. All right. Let's kind of start. I'm going to kind of ask you some questions, and like I said, we'll explain things a little bit later. Um, I think he wants to snitch on himself. Yesterday. Play golf with Bob. Okay, there it goes. You might as well lock this nigga up. He said he plays golf. That's that's all we need to know right there. Like, go ahead, but go ahead and just, like, you know what I'm saying? At this point, it's just, I think it's done. Our parents is a, a, a father son. Oh, good or bad. I went to dinner with my dad and my two buddies. And then uh, went home, went to the bar for like a little while. I'm, I'm so, I know I said I wasn't going to pause, but I'm not going to pause too much. Like, I might pause a little bit. But this dude sound like, why does he, why is he like, you know what I'm saying? This, I don't know what accent this is, but like, why is this nigga talk like a fucking Disney super bully? Like, surfer dude, like, come on, dude. Like. Damn, bro. Like, this is, these are the type of, like, this is how, like, niggas talk when he try to make fun of niggas who surf, like, but this nigga really, like, speaks like this, you know, and no disrespect to anybody who speaks like that, I'm just saying, like, that's crazy. I've never, never really heard an actual person talk like that. Drew and I went over to talk to Yardley, and... Who's Yardley? Yardley what, is my former girlfriend. Okay. Which this whole thing's about, which I understand, but... George has now initiated the investigative subject matter himself. It's the perfect opening scenario for the interrogator because she's given nothing away, making it more likely for him to reveal yeah. details that will contradict the evidence. He said, why would he say that? Because now he just said, oh, this is what this whole thing's about. Like, he so snitched. Like, why would he do that, bro? Jesus Christ, nigga. Why don't you, why don't, like, well, I do want him to snitch on himself if he really did it because, like, you know what I'm saying? He just took some of my life. But, like, bro, why... Don't y'all just stay silent, bro. Because she's given nothing away, making it more likely for him to reveal details that will contradict the evidence. When I went over to talk to Yardley, I, I like was like, Yardley. And she was like, 
already f like totally freaked out because of what she did this past like a few days ago and she we haven't talked since and i was just gonna go talk to her mm -hmm. Yardley slept with another lacrosse player from North Carolina Damn. the week before, which is what he just referred to. And she was already like, oh, like freaking out. Like, you know, you can't go me, you can't go me. And I was like, I'm like just trying to talk to you. The investigation team obviously had no way of knowing this, and George has now confessed to the crime of second degree trespass. Oh my God, yo, like this, yo, this is the word, not even, we're even nine minutes into this video. And he is literally he's just snitching on himself after snitching on himself. Like, this is actually ridiculous. More importantly, however, he's just confessed to initiating the supposed confrontation. He now can't say that he was somehow tricked or misled into that situation. He knowingly stepped into it. And the critical fact he can actually recognize and remember this will be used with, against him. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. If your relationship ever gets to that point, chat, you... Well, hopefully it never gets to that point. But if it even shows a sign of getting to that point, you shouldn't be in that relationship. Because, like... Him ...repeatedly in the future. And like she like started being like like getting like all like you know like really like defensive. She was already like on the defensive edge and like I was like, listen, I'm not here to like I'm just here to talk to you and she like got all like like sat up like her bed. We need a light counter. Y'all know how you, people be saying, I say, I pause a lot and I say, I ain't gonna hold you a lot. We need a light counter. I'm not gonna hold you. It's against the wall. Like if it was in this corner, she was like up against the wall. And I was like, like we were sitting there talking and like she started being like, like, you know, like getting like all like aggressive like after this. And so I was like, all right, like chill out, like and choke her a little bit. So just to re it's kind of getting ridiculous. Like he's definitely said like 50 likes in the past like 30 seconds. Like that's actually an insane amount of words to use over and over again in that short period of a time. So yeah, he definitely like I, I definitely think bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like Except what actually just happened there. And so I was like, all right, like chill out, like and choke her a little bit. He will now say the words and she started being like, then simultaneously mimic a body colliding with the wall. He will then stop himself mid-thought and subtly modify- Yo, JC is be analyzing like the fuck out of these videos. There it go, bro. He gotta stand again. This is the same thing he did for Cliff. The detail. And she started being like, like freaking out. And I was like, listen. And she started being like, like freaking out. He goes from illustrating Yardley hitting the wall to, as he states, freaking out. And she he seems to realize mid-sentence, this isn't the best way to explain her injuries. So he changes the detail to buy himself time. And she started being like, like freaking out. And I was like, listen, I'm not like here to do anything. I'm here to talk to you. He carefully shifts the topic from Yardley to himself and keeps it there for eight seconds before attempting to re-explain what occurred in a more self-preserving manner. And she was like, and like, sort of like, being like, no, 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 talk about this. And like, I mean, I was on all her arms and stuff, but like, I, I never struck her. I never like hit her, hit her like in the face or anything. I was just like. Funny thing is, they just asked bro to come to the police station to help with an investigation. Bro didn't say no. She didn't say no names. They didn't give no context. Like he's literally quite li like, I know I keep, I'm saying like two now. Jesus Christ, like, like, like fuck. Um. They really just asked bro to come in for an investigation. They didn't say no names. They ain't asked really no questions. They just gave bro's rights, like his Miranda rights, and just, he just stopped. He just started talking. I and who, like something happened last week, you know, and I was like, all right, like, well, so we were like talking over there. And I mean, I somehow we ended up, somehow I was resting at her on the floor and I was just like, stop. I just like, and I was holding her. I was holding her. I was a little bit persistent. I was wrestling her on the floor. All further evidence that designates George as the aggressor. Jesus He's Christ, completely bro. shut down his ability to argue any sort of self-defense claim. I, like, and then, this, like, I want somebody to really tell this nigga to shut the fuck up. Because he, they said he could stop. They said he could stop at any time. Like, 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 like. Like, you can stop. Questing a lawyer is no longer a primary concern. So the interrogator will now increase the pressure. She will confront him on certain elements that she pretended to overlook before. And the ideal scenario is to cause just enough panic so that he backpedals on previous statements and contradicts himself. All right, so you go over there. 
Knock on the door. Her front door is open. Mm-hmm. Her room door was closed. I knock like, like are they like? She heard me, open the door and and went in. All right. Went in where? To her room. All right. Straight to her bedroom. Straight to her bedroom. Yeah. I mean. How'd you get through the door? Her door. Or the mm-hmm. front door. Her door. Actually, it might have been locked. Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Just, just be honest with you. Yeah, no, yeah. Forward. It was actually it was locked. Yeah, because yeah. I think I put a hole. Yeah, you punched door. a hole through the door. The, he just casually said he punched. How do you forget that? The, oh yeah, like I think like did I punch a hole in the door? Yeah, there was there was a hole. There was a hole. Yeah. Yeah, there was a hole. Like I feel like this isn't like something. Like I don't I don't think this is an actual real person, bro. Pretty sure, actually, now. Yeah, now you said that, yeah. All right. Pretty what, what, sure. Why did you do that? Did you well, I, I you guess, yeah, when I, once I was in her room, she was, like, very, like, you know, like, or, like, blah, 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 not, like I don't want to talk to you, like, all this stuff. And she was very, like, you know, very on edge, like, I don't want to talk. I mean, I wonder why you definitely punched a hole. I mean, if somebody punched a hole in my door, I mean, I'd definitely be a low on edge. Nigga just acted like those were regular behaviors just to to open somebody, get in somebody's house and just punch a, a, a hole through their door. Like, I'll talk to you. Why, why'd you punch the door then? A very unusual time to interrupt a suspect in such a contentious manner. He was giving away self-incriminating information that could be used to establish a motive. He was doing exactly what the lead investigator wanted. But Damn. Detective Ed has now stopped him in his tracks. It's a reckless maneuver at this point in the interrogation, which Detective Reeves is no doubt conveying it. <laughs> Yo, he's, why did Detective do... So the nigga, the other Detective A say shit the whole time and bro just want to stop bro from saying it. Yeah. So why did you push the... Because like, I want to talk to her. Detective Reeves will now bring his guard back down through a reassuring tone and gently guide his train of thought back to his grievances. What you did was bullshit. Like, be was, saying shit that's without not thinking. Like, okay. And I was just like, I, like, and and she's like, uh, like, not like, like, you know, she's like, uh, like, you know, sort of pushing everything that she did to the back burner and like talking about like, like, you know, like. They tried to like put everything that she did like wasn't important. It kept going to the point where she like I was like, listen, like you're like we have to figure like out what's going on. And she was like, I'm not I'm about to talk, I'm about to talk to you and then she like pushed me, like, get out of here. Like like come on, like, you know, and she that's when she was like wiggle and like, like get away and like, you know, like hide in the get in the corner. I feel like I'm losing brain cells while watching this. Like, I don't know why. Like, this nigga talking is really making me feel like I'm I'm losing some kind of intelligence. Like, oh, I'm even saying, even when I say like, I just kick yo. Like, I feel like I'm losing intelligence watching this. Did you touch her neck area at all? Did you choke her at one point? Um, I not even may have wrong, grabbed her a little bit of the of back <laughs> when we were like. But I never like strangled her. Okay. Um, okay. but I yeah, I mean during the whole like commotion, you know, like I we may have I might have grabbed her neck, but I never was never was like strangling her. So you just grabbed her neck, but you weren't strangling her though. Like it's... I've seen a lot of JCS videos. This might be the dumbest nigga of all time. Oh my god. I don't I think they didn't even have to tell him shit, bro. I feel like if they put him in a room, he would have just started talking and just instantly like if the detectives weren't there and he was just talking to fucking air, bro, he would have snitched on himself still. Like that's how fucking I think this nigga has a fucking like an uh, IQ of a fucking brick. Okay. More detail that was unknown to the investigation. The fact that he grabbed her neck can now be used as evidence. It paints a more frightening picture of the incident with relation to the suspect's aggression toward the victim. This was an extremely damaging revelation for George's defense. The discussion moves to the moment he left, and George admits that he took Yardley's laptop. Why'd you grab her laptop? Because I was so pissed that she wouldn't talk to me. I was like, I don't know. I like took it almost as like collateral, I guess. I don't know. It's it's not reasonable logic, but right. 
Okay. I don't know. Did you take anything else besides no, your laptop? No. When you left out of there, I mean, you saw that she was bleeding on her nose. She's now about to ask a question with the same implication for a second time. Notice what occurred the first time. Did you go back and check on her at any point? No, I did not. Okay. Did, mm -hmm. did you try to call rescue or anything to make sure she's all right? No, I did not. No. Why? The face of bewilderment, if there ever was one. It's very strange that he's so taken aback by such a question, especially when you take into account the possible outcome if he had actually called for help. One medical expert revealed in the courtroom for the very first time that following Yardley Love's brutal beating, had George Hughley or anyone else called for help, she might have survived. Uh, I didn't think it was like, in, I didn't think that she was like, in need of like going to the emergency room, I we she just got I made it up. Like, what do you think that? I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't. Did you say when you were and correct me if I'm wrong when you were shaking her, her head was hitting the wall? Well, that was in the beginning. That was in, initially when I walked in, like she was like up in the corner, like saying, "Get like get out of here," like you know, like this. Mm -hmm. but, at, at any time when you were shaking her, did her head bang the the wall? been hit pretty good right there so I'm just trying to figure out did you hit her with something no was that no, I, never, I never never touched her or struck her or anything well you touched her you had your hands on her. You know, I, yeah, no I, I said never struck her okay so you you, you I'm, I'm gonna go through this one more time make sure we're on sure, the same sure. page so you're you're pretty pissed at her from a week ago for sending you text messages do you have those text messages where she says she uh, as you put it fucked somebody I actually might have okay. those yeah all right you got your phone with you yeah. Let's, let's pull it out and scroll through it. Let's see if we can see those. Can the next the moment is fascinating because it symbolizes how drastically George's life is about to change. The interrogator will invade his personal space to make sure he's not deleting anything from his phone. Soon after that, she will take the phone out of his hand and place it on the table. Actions that would be completely unacceptable in almost any other circumstance. Say. There, were, there were like, I guess what you call like a, like a like ongoing conversation. I almost guarantee, I almost guarantee. In his first recent messages, he texted some dude named Brad. Damn, Brad, I can't believe I really like packed somebody up. Like, I guarantee his first message. The investigator could probably see it in the first message, bro. It's probably gonna be a message to his homie. Wow, I didn't mean to take it that far, dude. Like. I guarantee, bro. Too long going, like, it's a message and it's gone. Okay. I don't even have one. They don't leave that right in front of All right. Let's talk about how you, you entered. Entered, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Because to put your, to have put your fist through the door. No, I, she it's has actually my been leg, I'm pretty through sure. Your leg? Because that's why my legs like this. And went in there. What kind of madman puts his hand through a door to get in, bro? What kind of madman sticks, puts his whole hand through the door to enter? This nigga sick. Lock the nigga up. What, uh, what happened last night, but set it up for me, lead it up to me a little bit here. Why did you guys break up exactly? Why? Why? Yeah. Well, we are not, we are not from the same area. Right. And I'm going, or she wants me to New York, and I'm not exactly sure where, what I'm doing yet, but I'd like to move to San Francisco. Are you not doing that shit no more, bro? Why'd you take her computer? I don't know. I have no idea. There's maybe, maybe because the, there's evidence on the computer, emails that you sent? No, or? there's no, I mean, you, you can find, you can read all the emails and right. everything back and forth. Detective Ed now asks George if he held Yardley down on the bed. He's trying to subtly set the grounds for an argument of smothering, which isn't a terrible idea, but would be disproven by the autopsy regardless. No, no. Did you fall down on top of her, you know, rest on the ground? wrestling on the ground for like a little Did bit. Did you wrestle on the bed at all? No, I never like, no, never like. Sometimes he said like. We were, like wrestling around, and that's when her nose started bleeding. Was it pretty noisy when you all were wrestling around? No, I mean. Was she screaming? No, 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 she was no, no, she was not screaming. Actually, I mean, if I'm cracking, kind of, if I'm cracking my head in the wall, I'm gonna be saying, "Oh, yeah, yeah." yeah. No, I mean, she was not screaming. Yeah. She should have been, probably. I mean, maybe. 
Yeah. She should have been. Oh, she should have been. Probably, maybe. <laughs> oh my God! You know when he reverse it, bro? He like when when JC has reverse him, he gonna be like, "This right here is called the Mandela effect." The man, you can see it right here that he says should have been screaming. Like he really go ahead and it's not called Mandela effect. That's something completely different. But he really going to deeply analyzing this shit. Probably. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Why do you think she should? I don't know. I mean, well, she was screaming when I first like came into the room. She was like, "No, like I'm not talking to you. Like get the fuck out of here and all that." But like, at any point before you said you you and this was your words. You said you tossed her on the bed. And then you left. Also, like, very small detail here, but there's nothing in this cup. Like, I heard the cup, like, tap on the a table twice. There's nothing in the cup. So, if he drinks out the cup from this point on, chat, he definitely did it. 100% it's definitely locked. I just want y'all to keep that in mind. If he drinks out the cup... And you didn't, you didn't feel like you needed to call rescue? No. After that? After banging her head and... No, she... I, shaking I, I, her no. and blood coming out her nose on the floor? No. There's nothing about yeah, like you missed anything that no one asked him right now. There's nothing mm -hmm. about like going going to get anything or going you know. I don't know why I took the computer. George rambles about why there was no reason for taking the laptop for another twenty seconds, during which time Detective Reeves decides that enough information has been attained. Phase two is now complete, and the fate of Yardley is about to be revealed. These moments in interrogations are considered important for the purpose of gauging a suspect's response. It's believed that a sharp and sudden revelation can make it difficult to fabricate emotion. So in theory, this will cause a suspect to provide either a genuine response or a relatively obvious disingenuous response, which often comes in the pretense of shock or remorse. I mean, I guess that's where my logic was at, but that was, which is... Well, I have to tell you I something. I think I know why you took the computer. In the midst of what would have been a flawlessly executed moment. That would have been that would have been a that would have been a, a Chris Hansen moment. Well, I had to tell you something. Um, I'm Chris Hansen. Um, we're doing a show, How to Catch a Predator on Dateline NBC. That would have been a, a perfect gotcha moment. Like, bro, in the blue messing it up, bro. The other detective, this is his second time doing this, bro. Like he low-key like like he low-key ruining the vibe. This might be important for Asian, but like, bro, come on, let her get her, her little joint off, bro. I think I know why you took the computer. In the midst of what would have been a flawlessly executed moment, Detective Ed jumps back into the laptop mystery. The suspect has essentially confessed to murder. This really wasn't the time for regurgitated conjecture over a petty theft misdemeanor, which Ed was clearly being advised of once again through nonverbal communication. Why do you think? You, go, go, right? go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. She's dead. You killed her, George. killed her. She's dead? I think you knew that already. No, I did not. In our opinion, George is being truthful here, and we believe the interrogator feels the same way in this moment. She's dead? How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her, George. How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her. Now, regardless of bro knew or not, if he, okay, if he, if he, if he did know, this actually makes it actually worse if he did know, because he's actually a level 100 idiot. Because he didn't call nobody to help. So he, he pretty much knew what was about to happen, bro. So if he knew, he's still an idiot. If he didn't know, he's even more an idiot, because, like, that's actually ridiculous. George appears to be going through a delayed response. It's so foreign a revelation that it's yet to sink in. Once the shock settles, acting. he refuses to accept it, and this denial appears to be a momentary coping mechanism before the reality of the situation truly hits him, which will happen at this time in the footage. Oh, my God. She's dead? Yes. She's dead? Yes. She's dead. She's dead. How? How? I already told you how. You already told us how as well. How is she dead? You just told us. Damn. Oh my god. You went in there to talk with her, but it got out of control, right, George? 
The detectives will now add further pressure to keep him talking. Suspects will often divulge information. Yo, stop. L acting? What? What? She, she's that? She's that? Oh, man. Oh, oh there's no way. Oh. What? Are you serious? She, she that? Oh, my God. No. Oh, fuck. Why have you done this? Like, come on. In these moments, in the panicked attempt to save themselves, <laughs> and in doing so, can shut down a more credible storyline they haven't thought up yet. The alcohol got a hold of you. You kicked in her door. She started to fight with you. You punched her in the head. Or you cracked, She's not dead. You cracked She's her head. Dead. You She's cracked her head dead. in the window or in the, in the wall. She's not dead. She is. She's not. Dead. I ain't BSing you right now. It's Why would they lie to you though? Yo, this is like, oh my god! Like this dude is the worst. Like, ever, I'm not gonna lie. Why would they lie about somebody, like, being packed up? Serious. I want to see, I want to see her. George, look at me. George. She is dead. You are not here to dance with us. You're, you're here because she's dead. The alcohol? I did? don't believe it. I don't believe it's it. It's true. I, dude, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I did it. I, I don't. Damn, that was a, that was a, a NBA young boy stutter. Like, damn. I don't you, believe You, 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 you. Dude, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I did it. I, I don't it. believe that she's dead. How did you? How did, how did I don't you, believe that she's dead. How I she, don't believe that she's did dead. Did you punch her? Did you hit her? How? She's, hit there's her no off. way she's dead. There's, she's not dead. I, Guys, I don't know. Maybe this is just me, but I don't think he thinks that she's dead. But that, I don't know. That might be a guess. I'm not no psychologist or nothing. So I don't know. I don't believe that she's did, dead. Did you punch her? Did you hit her? How? She's, hit there's her no off. way she's dead. There's, she's not dead. I didn't. I listen, never listen, did listen. anything. I didn't, I didn't, I did not, I did not. All right, let's, let's calm down. Five stages of grief. I did not, like, hurt her, like, she's, she's not dead. Let's calm down. So my list of five, so we can, we can go ahead and analyze this. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Turn around. Relax. Turn around. Relax, you'll be around. Tell me she's not dead. Tell me she's not dead, though, please. She was, like, standing up with me. She was standing up with me. She was standing up with me, looking at me. Was well, she standing or holding you? She were was holding standing her up. up, looking at me. Okay. She's not dead. I know she's not dead. I know. Oh, hundred million reasons she's not dead. I did. The serious topic. Reasons she's not dead. I did. Jarvis, yo. Yeah. You cannot be dead. I know, I know, I know, I hate you. The fuck you laughing? What do you mean, why am I laughing? What do you mean, why am I laughing when bro is really sitting here talking about some what? What the fuck you mean, why am I laughing? When bro is sitting here acting like the this, talking about some denial. Bro, are you, you, are you wrong for laughing? Why, 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 you wrong for laughing? When bro over here laughing, I mean, when bro over here just blatantly lying and crying like he's in a, 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 a bad corn film, asking why I'm laughing. Ask why he's acting like this, and then let's go answer that question. You talking about why I'm laughing? You cannot be dead. I know, I know, I know, I hate you. No, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it did not, it didn't, it didn't. And she's like, no, 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 like, get away from me. You have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave. Have to leave. Have to leave. I was like a little bit persistent. Was I mean, she screaming? She should have been. I didn't kill her and leave. I didn't just, oh my God. I didn't kill her. I did not kill her. I did not kill her. I did not. I did not. There's no way I can do it. No way. No way. Okay, so we have denied. I want a lawyer. I don't. <laughs> Dog, shut up. Oh my god, yo. Yo, get, get, yo. I'm about to stop. I'm about to get, I'm about to click off this video. I'm about to go. Oh my god! You could have asked for that 27 minutes ago? <sighs> he needs all? I want a lawyer. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. What? Bro was snitching for so long I hopped on a Nardo game at Scraps for you. There's no way. There's no fucking way. So what, 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 what? Should I talk to someone? Who do you want to talk to? Anyone. 
a lawyer. When do I get appointed to you? Okay, what do I do now? Go to jail? Yeah. All right, George, right now, I know you're, you, you no longer want to talk to us. That's fine. I'm just letting you know something. We're working on a search warrant right now. And what it is, is we're going to have to collect some stuff from you, like what's called a buckle swab. Okay. Why did you guys say, why did you guys come in and say you were searching for an assault? Better call God because Saul ain't saving his Yo. ass. <laughs> Bro, why do you think? Why do you think? The, the when, Since when are, like, why do you think? Why did you guys, you, you guys didn't tell me that this is what you guys, like, why would they? Why would they say that, bro? Why would they say that? Now we're getting, we're getting into the, the whole lawyer, lawyer thing was really the bargaining phase. Now we're getting into the, you know what I'm saying? Why did, why did you guys say, why did you guys come in and say you, you were searching for an assault? I never said anything about an assault. Someone, he did, you, someone came in this morning. I never mentioned to you anything. Just told you we're investigating something. We're investigating something. So. Do you want me to call anybody for you, George? No, the question at the start of video. At the start of this video, you were asked to think of what you would do in this situation. Really try and imagine what would be going through your mind in this. Do you want me to call anybody for you, George? If I'm in George's position, which I'm not in George's position, I'm calling Saul Goodman. I'm calling Saul immediately that's the, my first call if he's not calling Saul then it doesn't matter but knowing him he's not going to call anybody knowing him he's not going to call anybody this moment as you might just gain a restorative outlook from both knowing the answer while not having to answer this particular question but there is of course no possible way you will gain anything close to the newfound perspective George has acquired in this moment which unfortunately for him is no longer of use let me call your dad that camera just had a, a lag. That surveillance camera just had a lag. She can tell about everything. Okay. How? Here we go. I don't believe it. How? There's no way she can be dead. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. There's no. some of y'all in chat want me to feel bad for him in some way but i don't i, I really don't i don't know why y'all some of y'all are like oh my god you're you're so messed up for laughing why would i why would i not laugh at him for he did something stupid he's getting caught up for him and he's he, he's like facing the consequences of his actions why wouldn't i laugh at him yeah. These next few moments are a turning point. The leg iron seemed to initiate a shift in his constitution, and his denial will completely cease from this point forward. He will continue to ask why and how, but he will no longer reject the severity of what is happening. Acceptance. 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 Continue to ask why and how, but he will no longer reject the severity of what is happening. Stage is just like that, chat. Oh, heck of a day, bud. Fellas, how are you this morning? Fellas, how are you this morning? Bro, stop. Who is that? Goofy ass. Fellas, how are you this morning? Bro, who are you? We're not even worried. Why did he, why did he, why did he put him? Heck of a oh, the day, lawyer. Bro. bro, his lawyer better be Saul or don't even come in the room. Heck of oh. a day, bud. Heck of a day, bud. Fellas, how are you? They just put that in? Like, who is that? I am here the rest of my life. I'm sorry? So I am here the rest of my life. In this room? No, in jail. I don't know. Oh, well, if there was any doubt in your mind, then I mean, here we go. 4K, well, actually 360p, but I digress. I digress. Well, if there was any doubt in your mind, like, damn, maybe he didn't do it. Maybe we're really just like. So, for any of y'all questioning why I'm laughing at him, there is your statement full in effect. Thank you.
George was taken to the regional jail soon after this moment. He would go on to plead not guilty to murder and was held without bond for almost two years awaiting trial. Damn. It began on February 6, 2012. Well, testimony is now underway in the murder trial of the former UVA lacrosse player accused of killing his ex-girlfriend. For the first time, we have video of Hughley as he was led into the courtroom. Contrary to his appearance Jesus in the days that Christ. followed his arrest for the murder of 22-year-old Yardley Love, he appeared pale, frail, and gaunt. The prosecutor presented a case that Hughley went to Love's apartment that night, busted through her bedroom door, and in some way struck her, causing blunt force trauma, which led to her death. We've also learned that on that night, George Hughley was exchanging what were described as playful text messages with three other women. Those messages continued late. <laughs> Yo, I'm not watching this. Yo, I'm not watching this. Oh, my... God, there was no excuse for him to do this chat at all. But at least in your head, you could try to find some reasoning for it. Like, even though there's no reason to really take it there, you can try to find, you could try to find in his head what was his reason in his head. You could be like, okay, well, he got cheated on and he didn't like the fact that he got cheated on. So for some reason, his sick mind, he decided to take it there. Even though nobody agrees with like that. You can you can see in his head why he did it and for like with his mindset. Now that shit just went out the window. Now he like, he was doing it too with three different women. Quite literally a euphoria relationship storyline. Like shit. That on that night. By the way, I don't know how like I don't know if there's somewhere, where did he say this was Virginia or something? Where did he like surfer boy vegetable riz, but I don't know, bro. Like, 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 I don't know. Bro. Way struck her, causing blunt force trauma, which led to her death. We've also learned that on that night, George Hughley was exchanging what were described as playful text messages with three other women. Those messages continued late into the night and even after the alleged attack. Throughout this trial, Hughley has sat expressionless, almost stoic at the defense table. Result of blunt force trauma to the head. This was followed by highly distressing witness testimony from Yardley's neighbors. The noise was so loud. This was such a violent death that they heard it downstairs. Two separate witnesses, <clears throat> and it sounded like a stereo crashing to the ground. And it certainly didn't help that the jury knew that she was alive for two hours before she died, indicating that if George Hughley had come to his senses, he could have gone back there, called 911, and possibly saved her life. Still, the driving they argument for the defense is that George Hughley never intended to kill. They say this was all a tragic accident, that he does not deserve a life sentence. We do not care but instead a lesser charge and a second chance. Guilty of second degree murder and you will hear the... Be, he should be charged on... You uh, inside. Thank you for the dollar. He needs to be... There are two counts. He needs to be uh, one for doing that to that girl. That's a, that's a count right there. Uh, trespassing, he needs to get an account for that. Uh, destruction of property, let's get another account for that. And then the biggest count, which I think should be life by itself, is self snitching. I think they need to start making that a thing where you, if you snitch on yourself to that extent, you need to get life for that. I'm not gonna hold you. That's that's very ridiculous. Like, he has no cognitive skills at all. That should be, even if they somehow be like, oh, it was a freak accident or whatever, he should get life just for that alone in GTA. The a lesser charge and a second chance. Guilty of second degree murder and you will hear the sentence momentarily. A 26 year prison term came down. George Hughley was brought to court to hear his lawyers plead for the judge to cut in half the 26 year sentence recommended by the jury. Judge Edward Hogshire did trim it back, but by just three Hogshire. years. The jury in this case recommended 26 years. The judge changed it to 23, probably a small difference. 23? But, but why would he do that? It's surprising, isn't it, considering this is a woman who was beaten to death in her own bed. We think that George was convicted of a crime inconsistent with the facts, and he received a penalty inconsistent with what the evidence would require. There are no winners 
uh, in this case. With credit for the time that George Hughley has already served in jail, and if he gets time off for good behavior, he could be out in 18 years. And the family for Yardley Love has put out this statement, saying, We find no joy in other sorrow. We are relieved to put this chapter behind us. As for George, he was incarcerated at the maximum. He didn't even get like. He, yeah, if he does good behavior, he'll get out in 18 years. Wow. Bitch, I'm in Ella, posted up with crisis. I'll tell you what happened. Some Bitch, I'm random, my guy. Thank you for another gift. Maximum security Augusta Correctional Center for 10 years and has since been transferred to a prison work camp in Richmond where he's expected to serve out the rest of his sentence. The present consensus in the media is that George had no intention of killing Yardley, but that his 23-year sentence is still appropriate, if not lenient, and that him being drunk to any degree at the time of the murder is not an excuse, nor does it lessen the culpability of his actions to any extent. He'll be released at the age of 45, meaning he will have the second chance at life Yardley was never afforded. You can decide for yourself whether he deserves it or not. Hell no. Bro. Y'all tweaking that's enough? That is not enough. Y'all gotta understand, he just, he just caught, uh, he caught a body. It's not like he just, like, assaulted somebody. He caught, he literally, he, he literally just packed somebody up. Like, he didn't do the due diligence of even calling the, uh, calling the ambulance. That's not my life going. Like, I don't know how y'all could really be like, oh, yeah, that's enough time. Bro gets to live out his life 45 and up, and she don't get to live her life. I mean, I mean, everybody got their own thoughts on it, but nah, I don't, I don't think that's enough. But anyways, that was a good video, though. That was a that was a really, really good video, you know what I'm saying? JCS, don't miss. Plugs, don't touch that. I need those. Uh, IBBG. All right.